Let's look at some examples and identify which mode of operation each of these transistors is in. The first thing I'd like to do in this example is to calculate the base voltage. It's almost a voltage divider, and it would be a perfect voltage divider if it weren't for the base current. Since we have 9 volts and two 10 kilo ohm resistors, I'll assume that we have 4.5 volts at the base of the transistor. That's neglecting the base current. Of course, the voltage in reality at the base is going to be a little bit smaller than that because the current draw of the base will tend to lower down the voltage. Whether or not the base current is negligible is an assumption that we'll have to check here in a moment. We're now going to assume that the transistor is turned on. If I reach a contradiction here in a moment, we'll know that that assumption is wrong. Assuming that we have a 0.7 volt drop across the junction, I find that the emitter is at 3.8 volts. I can now calculate the emitter current. Using Ohm's law, I have 3.8 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms. 0.38 milliamps is flowing through the emitter. Now let's go back and see if my assumption of neglecting the base current was realistic or not. We can assume that beta is some number that's 100 or so. This means that my base current is going to be on the order of a hundredth of my emitter current. The question is whether or not this base current might have influenced my calculation of the base voltage. To tell whether that's true or not, we need to find this current. I'll just call it I1. I can find it through Ohm's law, 4.5 divided by 10. It works out to be 0.45 milliamps. Now compare these two numbers. Is the base current small relative to the current I1? Well, as a matter of fact, it is. And since it's so small, it's unlikely that my voltage calculated here, the 4.5 volts, is wrong. Of course, in reality, the voltage at the base is gonna be slightly lower than what I've written here, but because the base current is so small, it's almost correct. Let's now find my collector voltage. I can find my collector voltage by just assuming that it's equal to my emitter voltage. I can then use Ohm's law through the 10 ohm resistor in order to find the collector voltage. It works out to be 8.9962 volts. Now that we found our three voltages, what can we conclude? We have a four bias P injunction here, and we didn't reach a contradiction, so this transistor is not in the cutoff mode. I found that my base current was negligible, so it means my 4.5 volt here is accurate. And thirdly, I see that the voltages are properly arranged from high to low. I've got a collector that's higher than the base and a base that's higher than the emitter. Therefore, I can conclude that this transistor is in the forward active mode. Let's look at another example. Again, let's assume that the base current is negligible and I can immediately see that the base ought to be halfway between the power supply and ground. We'll assume that the base emitter junction voltage drop is a forward bias P injunction, that is 0.7 volts. That gives me an emitter voltage of about 3.8 volts. Current's going to flow downwards through the 100 ohm resistor, so I can conclude that this transistor is not in the cutoff mode. Now let's find the emitter current. Using Ohm's law, I can take 3.8 divided by 100. That gives me 38 milliamps. Let's now go back and estimate my base current and check to see whether it was negligible or not. I'm just going to assume again that beta is 100, so I can divide 38 by 100. Let's now find the current flowing down through this 10 kilo ohm resistor. Using Ohm's law, taking 4.5 volts divided by 10 kilo ohms, I find 0.45 milliamps. Now let's compare this current with my base current. Is the base current negligible or not? Well, no, it's not negligible, and that's problematic because it means that the 4.5 volts that I have written at the base is not really correct. If the base current is not negligible, then the actual voltage here at the base is going to be a lower number. In this situation, it's probably not low enough to drive the transistor into cutoff. This transistor is actually very likely in the saturation region. Let me show you why. Assuming an emitter current of 38 milliamps, I can then assume a collector current of 38 milliamps. Look what I found. The collector voltage needs to be at negative 29 volts. That's obviously not correct. Why isn't the answer correct? I use Ohm's law and I applied it properly across this one kilo ohm resistor. Well, it's not correct because of some assumptions that I've made here in the problem. I assumed that the current flowing down through this resistor was going to be equal to the current flowing out here through the emitter. I've also assumed that the base current is negligible. It's not. In reality, the collector voltage will be clamped. The current at the emitter will not be as high as what I just calculated. There's nowhere for it to come from. However, because the base current was not negligible in the problem, I'm not really sure what the base voltage actually is. This is problematic. 
you see now why it's important for the base current to be negligible. If you can't neglect the base current when you're calculating the voltages, you might not know what voltage you're going to get. So let's finish up this example by saying that we identified a problematic issue, base current too high, and in terms of the mode of operation, I can only guess that this transistor is in saturation. The voltage here is not really negative 29 volts. The voltage has to be somewhere between zero and nine, given the other voltages here on the circuit. It's probably somewhere around three or four volts. Let's now look at another example. The voltage divider is different here. How do we find the base voltage? Well, assuming that the base current is negligible, I have a simple voltage divider. It works out to be 8.2 volts. Let's subtract 0.7 volts from it to find the emitter voltage. We wind up with 7.5 volts. So far, so good. Current's going to be flowing in the correct direction through this resistor. Taking 7.5 volts and dividing it by 2000, I find the emitter current, 3.75 milliamps. Let's estimate my base current by assuming that beta is 100, and dividing 3.75 by 100. Knowing now a guess for my base current, I can go back and see whether it was appropriate for me to neglect it. The current flowing through this resistor is given by 8.2 divided by 10,000. I get 0.82 milliamps. Now let's compare this current with my base current. Was the base current negligible? Well, I think it was. We're at least a factor of 10 off here. It means that my 8.2 volts here at the base is a reasonably accurate estimate of the real base voltage. What I can conclude so far is that this transistor is not in the cutoff mode and it's either in the forward active or the saturation mode. We still need to find out what the collector voltage is to reach a conclusion. Knowing that my emitter current is 3.75 milliamps, I know that that's very close to my collector current as well. I can now apply Ohm's law across this collector resistor in order to find the collector voltage. I get 5.25 volts. Let's now look at my three voltages, my emitter voltage, my base voltage, and my collector voltage. Is this transistor in the forward active mode? No. This transistor is in the saturation mode. Moreover, my voltage calculation here is not accurate. The calculation of these three voltages relied on the assumption that current was flowing in the proper direction through the transistor. Remember, I'm assuming that current is flowing downwards through that resistor. I'm assuming that the same current is flowing downwards through this resistor. That is not possible if the collector voltage were really 5.25 volts. That's a voltage that's lower than the base voltage. It means from simple facts about electrical engineering that current needs to flow upwards. Current always flows from higher voltages to lower voltages. I've reached a contradiction because current can't flow both into the collector and out of the collector simultaneously. It means that the voltages that I've calculated are wrong, but I can still conclude that the transistor is in the saturation region. The real voltage here at the collector is probably a little bit higher than what I've written. Let's look at another example. Whereas in the previous example, the base voltage was a little bit high, in this example, you'll find that the base voltage is rather low. We again have a voltage divider here at the base. The base voltage works out to be 0.69 volts. Now let's assume that we have a forward bias junction here with 0.7 volts across it. If we take 0.69 and we subtract 0.7, we wind up with negative 0.01 volts at the emitter. This voltage cannot be correct. The reason it can't be correct is because by assuming that this base emitter junction is forward biased, we're assuming that current is flowing downwards out through the emitter. But because this voltage wound up being negative, that is below zero, it means that current has to flow upwards from ground down to the negative voltage. Current can't flow in both directions simultaneously and we've reached contradiction. What's the real voltage at the emitter? The real voltage is zero. We don't indeed have a forward bias junction here. The transistor can't turn on. No current subsequently flows down through the one kilo ohm resistor and no current flows up here either. Because the current flowing from the power supply through this resistor is zero, then I know that the collector voltage has to be nine volts. To conclude the problem, this transistor is in the cutoff mode. In this circuit, we have a voltage divider here at the base. The base voltage is gonna be a little bit high because we have a one kilo ohm resistor here and a 10 kilo ohm resistor down here. As we calculated in one of the previous examples, this works out to 8.2 volts. If we assume that the base emitter junction is forward biased, then we wind up with 7.5 volts at the emitter. Using Ohm's law, we can find that the emitter current is 7.5 divided by 10 or 750 milliamps. For the common 2N2222 transistor that you might find in many labs, this emitter current is really high. 
The datasheet for that transistor says it can accommodate a maximum of 800 milliamps. So we're already on the edge of burning this transistor out if it's a 2N2222 2222 transistor. The big problem that we're going to see though is that our base current is too high. If I assume a beta of 100, I can take 750 divided by 100 in order to estimate my base current. The question is, is that base current negligible relative to the currents over here on the left side of the circuit? Taking 8.2 and dividing it by 10, I find 0.82 milliamps on this branch and I find 7.5 milliamps along that branch. Not only is the base current not negligible, it's super big. It's not negligible, it means that my 8.2 volts here at the base is a completely incorrect calculation of the base voltage. In actuality, the base voltage is going to be a lot lower. The emitter voltage is also going to be a lot lower, but because the emitter current is so high and we're going to have that same current flowing down through the resistor at the collector, it's going to cause my collector voltage to start to swing low and it might tend to drive this transistor into saturation. In any case, this is a very poorly biased transistor. We've identified multiple problems, but they mostly stem from the fact that this resistor was too small. That's what caused the emitter current to be so large. That's what consequently caused the base current to be so large. That's what caused the base current to be non-negligible. I'm having trouble even predicting what mode of operation this transistor is going to be in. Normally, that's an indication of a poor design. Let's look at one more example. We have a voltage divider here at the base. The voltage divider causes the voltage to be 4.1 volts. Let's assume a forward biased base emitter junction and subtracting 0.7 from 4.1 volts, we wind up with 3.4 volts at the emitter. Since it's a positive voltage, it means that current is going to flow in the correct direction through the 5 kilo ohm resistor, and this transistor is not in the cutoff mode. Taking 3.4 volts and dividing it by 5,000, I find that the emitter current is 0.68 milliamps. Let's now estimate my base current by dividing that by 100. We now need to see whether the base current is negligible or not. So the current I1 passing through that 10 kilo ohm resistor is going to work out to be 0.41 milliamps. Comparing these two currents, I can conclude that the base current is negligible. This means that my calculated base voltage is reasonably accurate. So far, so good. This transistor is not in the cutoff mode and the base current is negligible. Let's now try to calculate the collector voltage. I'm going to assume that my collector current is equal to my emitter current. Of course, we have the base current there as well, so it's not entirely accurate to always say that the collector current is just equal to the emitter current, but it's reasonably accurate because they're 100 times apart. Knowing that current, we can now use Ohm's law in order to find the collector voltage. The collector voltage works out to be seven volts. Let's now look at my three voltages. Are they neatly arranged from the top down, from high to low? Well, the collector's at seven, the base is at 4.1, and the emitter's at 3.4. I've found that the base current is negligible, and I've not reached any contradictions. This transistor is biased in the forward active mode. Now that you can look at a schematic and identify the mode of operation of a bipolar transistor, you are well on your way to designing a transistor amplifier.